Welcome to Optimal version 0.1.1. This video will use the SCH example provided in the Optimal package to show how to put together a working Optimal graph in Dynamo. The SCH example tries to minimize two functions, f1, which is x squared, and f2, which is x minus 2 all squared, which intersect at x equals 1. Any x value greater than 1 but less than 2 will result in a lower value for f2 but a higher value for f1. On the other hand, any value of x lower than 1 but greater than 0 will result in a higher value for f2 but a lower value for f1. Anything outside of the range of x equals 0 to x equals 2 will result in both functions increasing, which is not the optimal solution. The Pareto front of this problem is shown here. All of these points are good solutions and the user can pick a solution based on how much they value one function over the other. This is the example that we will be creating, the STH function optimization. Let's do that now in a blank workspace. The initial solution list node creates an initial population for the algorithm based on a number of user-defined inputs. These inputs are the population size, which dictates the number of solutions in the population. We'll set this to 100. Then there is a number of objectives that need to be optimized. We'll set this to 2. Then there are the lower and upper limits, which we'll set to negative 10 and 10. These determine the range of solutions in the population. The upper and lower limits both must be in lists, and these lists must have the same number of indices. The output of this node is a list of lists. The first list contains the variables in the population. The next two lists contain the fitness of each variable. They are all currently set to zero and will be overwritten when the fitness functions are evaluated. Next, the fitness function or functions have to be defined. The number of fitness functions must match the number of objectives that was defined earlier. Some example fitness functions are already created as custom nodes in the optimal package. But for this video, we will go over the process to make the SCH fitness functions that are already included in the optimal package as custom nodes. To do this, a custom node must be created for each individual fitness function. First, go to File, New, Custom Node. The pop-up screen will prompt you for a name, description, and category. For the name, I will use SCHFF1. The description can be left blank, but it's usually a good idea to fill it out. The category determines where on the left panel in Dynamo your custom node will show up. We will put it under Optimo. Now a blank workspace will show up. This specific node needs an input, which will be a list, a function, and an output. The input list comes from the output of the initial solution list node, and we will be using the first list, the population of the first and only variable, as an input for this function. More inputs can be added for functions with multiple variables. This function will be x squared, so we need a math.pow node. This will raise all the variables coming in to the power of 2. An output also has to be specified. Save this custom node. Then to add this custom node in the main workspace, simply click on the Optimo tab and select the node. The second fitness function was created the same way. The only difference here is that the function is x minus 2 all squared, so there is an extra subtraction node. These fitness functions must be in a list, so we need a list.create node to do this. Now that we have the initial population and the fitness functions, the fitness of each member of the population can be evaluated with the function.apply and assign fitness func results nodes. The function.apply node takes the population and uses each solution as a variable for the fitness functions. The output of the function.apply node is two lists. These lists correspond to the fitness of the variables for each objective. The result gets written to the population in the assigned fitness func results node and we use later when the quality of the solutions get evaluated. As you can see, the output of this is the same as the initial solution list output but the last two lists have been overwritten with each variable's fitness. The result of the assigned fitness func results node gets put into a list, which will be used as an input for the main loop of the algorithm, the NSGA2 function node. The list contains this output, as well as a number that is initialized to 1. This number will act as a counter for the main loop. Next, the loop completion node must be placed. 
This node takes an iteration number as an input, which is the maximum amount of iterations that the main loop runs for. This node checks the number of times that the NSGA2 function node iterated and compares it to the iteration number input. When these two numbers are equal, the NSGA2 function node exits and the algorithm finishes operation. The NSGA2 function node is the main loop in this graph. It loops a certain number of times based on the number in the completion check. On each iteration, a new generation of solutions is created based on the previous generation. These solutions are evaluated and are improved over the previous generation. The inputs for this node are the lower limits, upper limits, and fitness function list. The inside of this node is very similar to the main graph. There is a generation algorithm node, which creates the next generation of solutions. Then, the population gets evaluated with the function.apply and assigned fitness func results nodes. Then, the population goes into the sorting node, where the parent generation and current generation get compared. The solutions that have the best fitness move on as parents to form the next generation, while the rest of the solutions get discarded. Inside of this node is also where the counter gets iterated each time the generation is made. This process repeats until the counter gets equal to the number inserted in the completion check. The outputs from the loop completion check node, the list created from the assigned fitness func results node, and the output from the NSGA2 function node go into a loop while node. These outputs feed into the continue while init and loop body inputs of the loop while node respectively. This node loops the NSGA2 function node as long as the loop completion check node returns true. After this, the algorithm is complete and has a final result. The output is a list with a counter in the zeroth index and the population in the first index. The population is in the same format as the output of the assigned fitness func results node. We only need the population, so we will take the first index of this list. This example uses the two fitness lists in the population to plot the solutions in the XY plane. Plotting these solutions lets us visualize the Pareto front for this problem. When we run the full graph, we can see that in the background, the solutions are plotted. These solutions follow the same curve as the Pareto front shown in the beginning of the video.